Welcome to this Corpomaz video on geometric progressions. A geometric progression or a geometric sequence is one where the next term is found by multiplying the previous term by a constant number. So in other words, here's a geometric sequence and we've got the numbers 7, 14, 28, 56 and so on. And as you see, each time we are doubling, we're multiplying by 2 each time. So we're multiplying by 2 to get 14, multiplying by 2 to get 28, multiplying by 2 to get 56 and so on. So rather than adding the same number each time or taking away the same number, uh, same number each time, we're multiplying by the same number each time and that is a geometric sequence or geometric progression. Um, one thing to note is that um, the sequence can get bigger, obviously, if you're multiplying by 2, 3, 4, so on. Um, it can also get smaller, so if you're multi multiplying by a fraction such as a half or a quarter or a third, it can get smaller. Okay, so let's have a look at some questions. So the first, uh, here are some questions. The first question says, find the next two terms of each of the following geometric progressions. So we've got the numbers 3, 6, 12. So to find what we're multiplying by each time, well, I can just divide 6 by 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we have multiplied by 2, and we're multiplied by 2 again. We could do 12 divided by 6, and see that's 2. So each time we're multiplying by 2 in this sequence, but you might have just looked at it and spotted we're doubling each time. So we're going to multiply by 2 again to get 24, and we're going to multiply by 2 again to get 48. So sometimes with geometric progressions or sequences, you can just spot what we're multiplying by. So in this one, you might just spot we're times by 4, because 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and so on. Or if you're not too sure, you can just divide any term by the term before it. So I could have done 4 divided by 1, which is 4. I could have done 16 divided by 4, which is 4. And as long as you're choosing two consecutive terms, whenever you divide, you'll always get the common ratio. So as you can see, we're multiplying by 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 would be equal to 64. And 64 times 4 would be equal to 256. Okay, let's look at two more. So this time we've got the terms 2, 40, 800. So to see what we're multiplying by each time, we can just divide a term by the term before it. So 40 divided by 2 is 20. So in this geometric progression, we're multiplying by 20 each time. So multiplying by 20. And again, 40 times 20 is equal to 800. So we need to times by 20 again. So that would be, well, 8 times 2 is 16. And then we've got three zeros, so that'll be 16,000. And times in that by 20, well, 16 times 2 is 32. And add on our four zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. That would then be 320,000. And they are the next two terms in that geometric progression. Okay, and our last one, we have got 3, 15, 75. Looking at the 3 and 15, I can see I'm multiplying by 5 each time here, but let's just check. Uh, 75 divided by 15 is 5. Yeah. So times in by 5 times in by 5. So we need to times by 5 again. So 75 times 5. That would be 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 7 is equal to 35 plus 2 would be 37. So the next one would be 375. And then 375 multiplied by 5 would give us 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 7 is equal to 35 plus 2 is 37. And then 5 times uh, 3 is 15, plus 3 is equal to 18. So then the next one would be 1875. And that's it. Okay, let's look at some other questions now. Something a bit more complicated. So this time the question says, the third term of a geometric progression is 12. So we have got the first term, the second term, the third term is 12. The fourth term is equal to 24, and so on. And the question says, work out the difference between the first term, so this term, and the fifth term, this term here. So sometimes what I find is whenever I'm doing geometric progressions, I like to sort of list it out and sort of draw out the sequence just so I can sort of visualize it. So it says, work out the difference between the first and the fifth terms, so these two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what the common ratio is, what we're multiplying by each time. So as we can see, we're multiplying by 2. So let's find the missing terms. So that means that this number would be 6, dividing by 2, going backwards, and then this number would be 3. And this number would be times by 2 would be equal to 48. And the difference between the first term, which is 3, and the fifth term, which is 48, well, let's work out the difference. That would be equal to 45. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Our last question is a little bit trickier. It's got some algebra involved in it. So we've got S is a geometric sequence. And it says all the terms of S are positive integers, so positive whole numbers. And the first three terms of S are 8, X, and 72. And the question says find the value of X. So we've got 8, X, and 72. 
Now, when you initially look at this, you might think you haven't been given enough information. But the great thing is, with geometric progressions, we know that each time we're multiplying by the same number. So we're multiplying by eight by a certain number to get x. We're then multiplying x by that same number to get 72. And to find this common ratio, remember if you divide the term by the term before it, you'll get this common ratio. So if you do x divided by eight, that would be equal to the common ratio. Or you could do 72 divided by x, and that would also be equal to the common ratio. I'm actually gonna write that down. 72 divided by x would also be the common ratio. So that means that these two things are equal to each other. x divided by eight would be equal to the same thing as 72 divided by x. I'm actually just gonna write that down. So I'm just gonna solve this equation and that'll tell us the values of x. So I'm gonna times both sides of the equation by x to begin with to get rid of the x here on the denominator. So timesing both sides by x will give us x squared over eight is equal to 72. Then I'm gonna times both sides of the equation by eight. So that will give us x squared equals, well 72 times by eight is equal to 576. Now to find x, I'm going to square root. So I'm going to square root both sides of this equation. Uh, both sides of this equation. So that's going to give us x equals, and it could be plus or minus the square root of this. So it's going to be equal to positive or negative 24. But remember, in the question it says that all terms of x are positive integers. So x here can't be equal to minus 24. So x would just have to be equal to 24, and that's our answer. X equals 24, and that's it.